We're here today to talk about Nikola Tesla and mainly his work with Tesla coils. Uh, how many here think that uh, Marconi invented radio? Ah, wrong. <laughs> my mind. <laughs> it was Tesla. Now most of us think of Tesla with uh, the electrification of Niagara Falls, his work with Westinghouse. My interest is with what Tesla did in Colorado Springs. He went out there to investigate what he called worldwide wireless. Uh, to get funding for his project, he went to J.P. Morgan and told him he wanted to be able to send radio messages around the world. But secretly, he wanted to transmit power for lighting. And in building his large coil out there, he claimed to throw up to 135 foot long sparks. Well, we're not going to do that today. Now, this coil that I'm about to show you is a square coil. As far as I know, nobody has built a square Tesla coil. And I was at a meeting with people who I looked at their videotapes and talked to them about Tesla when I was learning, and they all said, it won't work. Well, after this demonstration, let's see if they were right or wrong. Uh, the coil sets, coil sets behind me, uh, if you're wondering how I constructed it, it's the, the form is this plastic fencing. And as I was doing round coils, a friend handed me a chunk of square plastic uh, fencing and said, what do you think about this? Well, I started building the coil. And as I'm winding this, I said, this isn't going to work. Square coils don't work. So I threw it together, cobbled up a primer. I had overlapping turns. I did everything you're not supposed to do. Neon sign transformer. I only had one toroid at that time, and I threw that on the top of it. And I turned it on. Biggest surprise of my life, and you'll see what I meant, because the sparks started flying. It was better than anything I had. This was working better than the, the round coils I built per the experts' instructions. The way this works is I have a neon sign transformer. It's a 15,000 volt, 30 milliamp neon sign transformer, charging up a capacitor. The spark gap consists of tungsten rod. I went to a welding supply house, got a chunk of tungsten, and with a Dremel tool, notched it and broke it, and formed the electrodes. The base is a piece of plastic. The holder for the tungsten are coupling nuts with a hole drilled through it and a screw in the top. It then feeds a primary, and what I'm using for a primary is a piece of coaxial cable. Uh, the next coils I build, I'm not going to use coax cable because it's very hard to find the tune point. My tune point here is a thumbtack with wire wrapped around it stuck into the coil. Go ahead, laugh, but it works. Uh, the tune point is the problem with this. You keep trying. I don't have any mathematical way to figure this out. I can fool you and say, oh yeah, I calculated all this. But it was sure trial and error, the old Edison method. Uh, the uh, coil, I'm going to turn it on now. If anybody has a pacemaker, uh, insulin pumps of that, you might want to leave the room. I don't know CPR and I don't want to put anybody on the floor. So, now this coil has never been moved and you notice it's not really built up in a fancy case. This is an experimental model. It was sitting on the lab bench and I packed it up and brought it here, so hopefully everything will work.
you get that nice odor, that's ozone, the odor you're smelling is ozone. Uh, I don't run this for too long, and when, when I run this at home, after running it, I open the big overhead door and let all the ozone out. Uh, it's not good to breathe a lot of ozone. You can get what they call ozone poisoning. The next step of this, uh, and I'm still struggling with it, imagine one four foot, or one foot square, four feet high. Uh, I'm having troubles, but uh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> the, uh, now, is this the maximum I can get out of the coil? I don't know. What you're seeing is the best that I've done today. Maybe a different toroid, a different change of the spark gap. All this is trial and error. You adjust the spark gap, and I measure the, the length of the spark, and then I change the gap. I change the point where I stick that thumbtack into the coaxial cable. I uh, change different toroids. Um, all this has an effect. So it's a lot of trial and error. To me, this is the fun of it. The first one I built, I followed the directions. I wanted it exactly as they said, and it worked fine. But, gee, let's try some other things. What happens if I change this? So I'm, I'm undertaking a project now to make notes of, you know, what, when I change the gap, what happens? Uh, when I put more power into it? Now this is being run with a neon sign transformer. The next step up is going to be a pole transformer. Not on a small transformer, on a small coil, but on a larger coil. The pole transformer you run in reverse. You put in 220 volts, you get 14,000 out. Oh, this is 15,000. Well, you're 1,000 volts less. Yes, this is 30 milliamps. A pole transformer will give me 30 amps if I want it, or more. So I have to limit the amount of power going into the pole transformer. You might notice the piece of copper wire on there. Well, when I was doing this in high humidity, all the energy, most of the energy came out of the copper wire. Yesterday when running this, the humidity was down about 34% and it was radiating around the whole top of the uh, toroid. So humidity does have an effect on the performance of this coil. Uh, the drier, the better the action. I do have other coils which are the traditional round coils. Uh, they work fine too, but somehow to have something a little different that you don't see every day is, was kind of a challenge. What was the reasoning given by the experts who said that the square coil wouldn't work? They, what they told me was, if you build a square coil, it will arc at the corners. How much power are you actually putting into it? It's. Uh, 15,000 volts at 30 milliamps. Oh, okay, so you're, that's not the spec of the transformer, that's what you actually... That's what's going into it, you yes. actually know what's going into it. There's still much more work. If you notice, this is not a real fancy cabinet and all that, polished wood and all that. This is to learn. It's an instructional tool. It allows me to go in there and change different parameters to see what happens. Well, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to get a closer look, feel free to come up, and uh, uh, I will have to start dismantling this shortly. Thank you.